Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'm going to do in this episode, I will show you how you can subscribe to a platform event using LWC component. Now you must be wondering, uh, do we really have any sort of use case around that area? There are a few use cases. There's one I worked on, uh, you know, one of the companies I work for, where what they wanted to do was, right, when they wanted to send an email out, uh, they wanted to bring out a message or a, a uh, or something like uh, an LWC component where they select few options because they wanted to add few things. Uh, because out of box Salesforce email messaging, there is certain limitation. So even if you add a field to it, um, you don't really get an option uh, uh, to choose different stuff. So, so I have to do something similar uh, to replicate that behavior using platform event. So what what that will do is that. Whenever you create a, uh, someone try to send an email, um, so behind the scene, the trigger will publish via the platform event, and the LWC component will be listening to it, and LWC component will open up the screen, and, and you do the stuff, right? That's one use case scenario. Other use case scenario where I've seen that, right, you have a platform event in place, and usually people don't want it to use the logger to see every time the platform event get fired. So what they did was that they, they created an app um, and, uh, you know, with a lot of options on the app to, you know, for like a monitoring app, right, where they can see the platform and whenever the platform get fired, uh, you can view that information on the screen. That's just mostly used for uh, like a debugging and other kind of stuff, right, when something goes wrong. And they had an option to turn off and turn it on based on certain switch in the org. So that's... One of the thing I want to showcase today. Um, so let's say I have a platform event which get fired and how they get displayed, right? So what I'll do, uh, I'll show you what I meant. So I'll go here to the home page. So this is just a you know ugly looking uh, LWC I wrote. Um, so which is actually a platform event subscriber. This will subscribe to that um, uh, the event which I'm going to fire, right? So what I'll do, I will put it in the new page, and I'll go to account. So what I want to do, right, whenever I create an account with um, a status called on hold, it will trigger a platform event, and that platform event get used somewhere else. Uh, you know, I, I think, I believe that um, if you have watched my flow series where I talked about event-driven architecture, so you would know that this is one of the thing up the, uh, I built there. So what basically uh, I did was that you know you create an account uh, with an on hold status. It will trigger a platform event, and that platform event get consumed by a platform event flows, and that platform event flow will in turn fire another uh, subflow to do a certain process, right? So now in this case, what I'm going to do, I wanted to capture that. Uh, subscriber, sorry, the publisher part. Whenever this code publishes a platform event, I want to view at some place, right, uh, that information. So what I'll do, I will do a new, and I'll create something called test, and it will trigger platform event only for on hold stage status, uh, and I'll do on. And then I go here, you see the platform on fire. Yeah. So this is the account ID, which is done, just got created. If you look at it, this is account ID that's got created. And this is account ID, right? So this is an LWC component, an ugly looking LWC component. So usually, you know, uh, you can build uh, a subscriber using um, LWC. So I'm going to show you code is pretty simple. So, you know, you might have a different use case, but it's good to know how to create it, uh, a subscriber using LWC. It, it comes handy in certain scenario. If you are an architect, you wanted to build uh, certain stuff, right, where LWC is used and you wanted to use LWC as a subscriber, this approach might work. Um, so it's case by case, right? But I just wanted to show you a capability of LWC using which you can uh, subscribe to a platform event. Okay, so the, the first thing first, right, the template code is pretty simple, right? It's a template, uh, or I would say HTML code, which is, you know, 
latest payload info by by now you know right this is uh, I'm hooking up this uh, variable uh, which gets the which get populated using um, certain methods within the JavaScript file so um, I go to the JavaScript file that's applied from a log it's nothing much right it's just a simple code um, only thing though, um, yeah. right, this needs to be changed, that's all. Okay, so what I've done, right, this is, I have, I think by now you know what this code is doing, right? We are importing uh, a few things from LWC. Now we are importing a subscribe um, <clears throat> method from uh, lightning slash EMP API. Uh, you can also import unsubscribe. So here I'm not doing an unsubscribe. This is a one way, you know, to uh, get that um, option. Um, yeah, you can subscribe maybe using, um, you know, LWC, uh, sorry, Apex controller, but I haven't tried that approach. Um, so this is like channel name. So this is the name of my API name of the platform event, which I just created. So I hope you guys know how to create a platform, right? If no, then, you know, what do you have to do is that you go to this uh, setup. Under setup, what you'd normally do is that go to the uh, platform event. Uh, where is it? Platform events. Um and then you go and create a new platform, right? So I hope you guys know that. So, okay. So once that's done, right? So you will get the API name and this is the path event. So make sure you put event, otherwise it won't work. Okay, now I'm just using a handle subscribe, which is a uh, method, or you can have whatever you want. And then I'm getting a callback. In callback, I'm getting a response back and and then there's a subscribe method if you remember the subscribe will be got from here import and i'm passing a channel name a callback and whatever the message i'm getting i'm just logging to the control log and i'm just getting um i'm stringifying the the json and that json you know i'm passing it to the latest payload uh, in the callback so yeah that's pretty much um the code is about right and then the connected callback when the component loads you know it just um, handle subscribe so I'm passing the handle subscribe event under that uh, or in other words I'm calling the this store handle subscribe within the connected callback event and so that's why you know whenever uh, platform events get published using you know whatever means this component you know since it's been subscribed, it will receive that information and display it, right? It's a PubSub model, uh, even driven architecture in simple terms, uh, where you have publisher, where you have subscriber. So this is just one capability uh, of LWC, which I wanted to demonstrate. Um, you can expand it to make complex stuff based on your requirement. Uh, but if someone tells you, hey, I wanted to have an LWC, uh, which can subscribe to platform and you can look at you know this route you can do that and like I said uh, even in the previous episode it's good to write a JS code uh, I do understand that um, you know some companies may not uh, enforce writing a JS code but I personally believe that having a unit test in place will ensure that your code quality is maintained otherwise what will happen uh, that uh, your code might break right so uh, you know, some, with some changes, and then you realize, you know, when someone's doing a real test in the production, which is not really great, or in the UAT, right? Why do you give more work to test this, right? When, when your code can actually, t you know, test the logic, um, you know, to see if, if you have actually broken something. So, yeah, so that's all I wanted to talk about it. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have watched the podcast I, I did yesterday with Hator. Um, so Hator is uh, a technical architect. He works uh, with me in the same company in Deloitte. Um, so yeah, he's a pretty pretty amazing guy. 
Um, we call him DevOps card because he's extremely good in DevOps and plus in other stuff. So uh, I thought I'd to bring him to my show to have a chat with uh, him about Apex to, you know, to show you guys the best practices around Apex. Um, you know, because writing Apex is not just about, you know, if else, a while loop or kind of stuff, right? That's one part of uh, it that's from a syntax perspective. But, you know, you always have to make sure that whenever you develop something, no matter in Apex or LWC, you have to consider design pattern into consideration, which is very important. Otherwise, you know, what happens is that you're just actually making a mockery of the code. Yeah, if you are starting out for the first time, then I would encourage you to reach out to your senior developer in the company to understand, you know, which design patterns you're using and then, you know, work with that rather than being a rogue programmer, right? Not following any standards, which is not really great. And because that kind of approach will lead to more, um, you know, code issues in the future. And you actually adding to a tech depth and tech depth is really very bad. And if I'm an owner of a company, right? I mean, obviously, you know, I run two companies, but, you know, uh, in general, I'm saying if someone writes a bad code, then it's my responsibility to tell that person. But if someone is not improving constantly, then, you know, I have no choice to let that person go. So, you know, that's that's business at the end of the day. So that's one of the reasons why I'm saying whenever, you know, I can only show you certain things, right? But then you have to learn by yourself. You have to make an uh, initiation. You have to make an effort to understand you know read books you know try it out things by yourself you know um you know try different patterns read the code there are a lot of open source stuff out there not just read the salesforce code look at the java code out there look, pick up any open source projects out there maybe in the c plus um, plus though in c plus plus the thing is that like in in apex uh, you can't do uh, you know multiple inheritance but in c plus plus you can and then there comes the diamond problem. So, you know, so it's good to know, you know, you know, different things. You know, you can inherit a pattern which is written in C sharp, or you can inherit the pattern which is written in Java. So, you know, study different codes. Try to see, you know, you know, uh, try to look at the open source project and 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 see how it goes. Right. That's that's my advice if you are starting out for the first time. Right. Because it's very important that you understand not just to write code, but just to write an efficient code and the code, write a code in a better way. You know, don't write it for today, write it for tomorrow, right? You should be right thinking from a scalability perspective, right? If you wanted to, uh, you know, progress in your software development career, then you have to make sure you understand the concept because most of the people think they have four years experience that become a software developer or a senior developer. That's not the case. If you haven't done a design pattern work, if you haven't done a complex, you know, projects, then to me, you're still you know, junior to intermediate, at least in New Zealand, that's how it works, right? Like I have 15 years experience. Um, I, I have, I didn't call myself senior developers till I had a 10 years experience. And I had a lot of experience working on different projects, different technology, C Sharp, Delphi, you know, I've done a little bit of work on small talk. You know, you know it's, it's not so <laughs> it's not so pretty language, but it does the job for certain things. Um, so yeah, you know, be a curious learner. So right, like I said, I can only show you certain things. The rest is up to you how you go and learn things from your own. All right, that's all I wanted to cover. I hope you guys have an amazing um, Tuesday. And all of Jewish people out there, Jewish brothers and sisters, happy Purim. Um, so I was not planning to make a video today because it's a, uh, because of the festival. It's a holiday for us. But I thought, okay, I'll just make this one just to keep it consistent. So that being said, hope you guys have an amazing uh, Tuesday. Adios.